Hey everyone, we're back here in the shop to talk about the Dark Arrow 1. It's a two-seat kit aircraft we've been developing, designed for high-speed, long-range flight. Let me show you what we've got going on. Today I'm going to be talking about this guy here. This is our central tunnel avionics box. And uh, it's a pretty core piece of our electrical system because everything that's wired up in the plane ties into this box. So it sits uh, just between the instrument panel and the firewall. So after getting the wiring harness fully hooked up, we realized we wanted to make some changes and upgrades to this box. So starting with the box itself, you can see that we have cut a hole here and that gives us access to the main bundle inside the box itself. That allowed us to install quick bond studs and those will allow the wiring to be held off the box and constrained so that it's not moving around in flight. Uh, as you can see, we also added uh, this shrink tube sleeving to the connector that ties into the instrument panel. Basically that shrink tube sleeving will provide abrasion protection uh, for the bundle as it's routed into the instrument panel. Next steps with this will be to add connectors to each of these bundles back here. And we'll be doing the same kind of shrink tubing setup you see with the instrument panel bundle up here. And at that point, we'll have uh, a box that's ready to install in the aircraft. Uh, it's kind of cool because all this work took place outside of the aircraft and installing in the plane basically just means connecting everything. So. Um, yeah, pretty excited to get this thing ready for first flights. Last update, I walked you through the build process of designing and constructing the nose gear doors. Since then, I've worked on constructing this test stand. So this replicates what we have going on up here on the aircraft itself. This is our firewall of our aircraft. We've got our engine mount uprights and then our engine mount arms. And then behind this is our wheel well paneling. And the purpose of building this test stand is to test some of the core elements of the nose gear design itself. And I haven't really talked about the nose gear design itself, so let's jump into that quick. What we're looking at here is our nose gear strut construction. So starting at the bottom, we have our 4x5 Aero Classic tire that's tied into our self-steering or castering nose fork, attached to our bottom brackets that tie into our structural tube to help prevent bending. And then that's tied into our trunnion halves up here. Internally to all this is an off-the-shelf air shock. And then our trunnion halves tie into our engine mount frame here. And then on the back side of our engine mount frame, we have our retract arm tied to our linear actuator. So that's the basic construction of the nose gear strut. We are missing a few components. For example, our drag links would be tied in here and move in or link back into the uh, structure of the airframe. 
There are a couple key goals that we need to meet with the landing gear. The first one being that it has to absorb the energy during a landing. So we're actually designing it to meet the landing load conditions for certified aircraft for FAA standards. The second one is that it has to be lightweight. So the empty weight of the entire aircraft is 750 pounds, so we want to keep the landing gear as light as possible as well. It has to be manufacturable, so we're going to be making more than just one of these, so we have to keep that in mind. Additionally, we want it to be maintainable, serviceable, and we want it to be easy to install for builders. So we've got a lot of requirements here that we're shooting for with this, and the other couple challenges that we're up against is that because we've so closely integrated the engine with the rest of the airframe, we've shrunk everything down, and we've left a very small amount of space for our retract mechanisms, our drag links, and some of the other key components. So that's challenge number one. And then challenge number two is that the gear extends beyond 90 degrees. So in most aircraft of this size, uh, you'll see them come straight down. Ours comes a little bit further forward because we had to put our mount point a little bit further back. So we have to sweep through 123 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees. So that also poses a challenge for the retract mechanisms. So we've got a lot of goals in mind and we've got some challenges that we're up against. And that's why we've been going through this process of back and forth um, between design, analyzing, building, testing, and learning. So we've learned a lot from this initial uh, test setup rig that we have here. And I want to go through some of that next. With this test rig, we were able to hook up all of our systems and get a feel for how everything interacted with one another. We looked at the retract mechanism itself, so this linear actuator interacting with the strut. And the big takeaway from getting this all hooked up is it worked, and we like that. What we didn't like is the amount of flex that we saw in the system. So even though this is a wooden frame, we still saw some flex in our setup of our metal components. A couple ways to fix that, we could beef up all these components, add a little bit more weight to our system. We could additionally increase the length of our linear actuator to account for that amount of flex, or we could do a combination of both. We didn't really like doing either of those approaches for a number of reasons, the weight increase and moving this linear actuator out more kind of pushes us closer to the edge of the cowling. So, we wanted to go back to the drawing board and see if there's anything we're missing, anything we could change with this to improve upon it and make it even better to meet all of our goals from the beginning and also to address some of these challenges that we're up against. So I'm going to hand it off to Riley, who's going to talk a little bit more about what that looks like. As Keegan mentioned, in the process of building our nose gear test stand and testing the nose gear, we exposed some issues with our actuation system that we knew were going to warrant some changes to the design. With our linear actuator system, we were kind of up against the limits of what we could do with the linear actuator. So the scope of the project when we're looking at changes increased to looking at other actuation systems. This is our old engine mount design here. And in the process of looking at this and looking at new actuation systems, we ended up coming up with a new design, which is right here. Our new design is going to still keep a lot of similarities with our old design. The nose gear geometry isn't going to really change much, and it's still going to be electrically actuated. We have a nice, robust electrical system on our aircraft, so we want to use that. So we're sticking with electric, not going to something like hydraulic. It's going to address the issues that we were seeing with the old design, specifically the flex. But in the process of designing this new actuation system, it also has some other benefits. Uh, you can see that it's a lot more compact, which is nice. The fact that it's more compact ultimately means we're using less material, so it also has um, lower weight than the old design. And another advantage is that uh, we found that it's going to have faster retract time. So what's the secret to this thing? It's uh, gear driven, and the issue with our old design with the linear actuator, it did not uh, keep a constant mechanical advantage throughout its range of motion. The gear actuation system, which you can see here, has a continuous mechanical advantage that remains constant all throughout its range of motion. And I'll show you the animation of that here. So this is somewhat representative of the true speed that our new actuation system will move at. So we're getting a actuation time that's roughly cut in half. So we're pretty excited about that. We'll be showing some more details of this design in upcoming videos. We've already ordered a bunch of parts and materials so we can start manufacturing the parts. But as I mentioned, we'll save that for a future video. But excited to show you all that. 
That's all we have for this update. If you want to help support the project and get more frequent updates, consider joining our YouTube community. I'll leave you guys with some clips of other stuff we have going on in the shop that we'll cover in the future.